Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. This is a Vault exclusive, hence the blank shirt. It is pouring rain outside. So number one, I'm wet. Number two, if you hear thunder, it's just a storm. I had a bolt of lightning and a, and a thunderclap in my front yard about 10 minutes ago. Sounded like a bomb went off. But I kind of feel I have to do this video now. So <laughs> here we are. I've learned that if you mention Tesla in a video, you got to be very careful because the Tesla supporters will scrutinize what you say. And if you make a slight mistake or even say anything that's seemingly possible to consider as disparaging of Tesla, they will climb all over you for it. So, so I was surprised the other day when I got one of the craziest emails. And trust me, I get a lot of emails. I got one of the craziest emails of my entire life yesterday. And I got it from somebody because I hadn't mentioned Tesla. <laughs> and this is so bizarre that at first I thought I was being punked. I thought somebody was joking with me. And based on the series of emails, I realized that this person wasn't joking. They were deadly serious. I did the video a couple days ago, Vault exclusive, about my mother and how, about how my mother bought a foreign car in the late 1980s. And she's the first person in my family to do so. And I was making it very clear that I was talking about how I was growing up and how I was raised in southeastern Michigan and uh, growing up near Detroit, uh, the big three automakers at the time were Ford, GM, and Chrysler. American Motors was around for a while, then got bought up by Chrysler. But the bulk of the auto industry at that time was centered in southeastern Michigan, and the U.S. auto industry was centered there. There were some other car companies starting to make inroads, but generally speaking, Ford, GM, and Chrysler, and American Motors. And I mentioned that I had never owned a foreign car uh, in my entire life, and I still haven't. And I did own a truck built by AM General, but that's the only one not built by the big three or AMC. So I mentioned that concept and that time frame and that era several times and everybody understood what I was talking about. A lot of people from my generation chimed in and said, Steve, I remember that. I know that. You know that there are places in southeastern Michigan with parking lots that say American cars only. Foreign cars park across the street. And I can find you one of those signs today. They are still out there. They're not as common as they used to be, but they're still out there. And so that was where I was coming from, was how that was the prevailing belief in the 60s and 70s. You bought an American car, an American car is Ford, GM, or Chrysler. So you might wonder, Steve, how does this tie in with Tesla and how you intro the story? Well, I got an email. It was a wall of text. And it began by saying that I had insulted Tesla and Tesla owners by leaving them off the list of the American car companies in America in the 1960s and 70s. And the writer of the email said, Steve, somehow you don't know this, but Tesla is California-based. California is a state in America. Therefore, Tesla is an American car company. And you left them off the list of American car companies that you're talking about in your story. Now, I'm not sure if she thought I didn't understand that Tesla is in America or that California is in America. I went to law school in California, and I did not think I was going to a foreign country. And I know that Tesla is based in California, but my story was centered on events leading up to 1988, when I said my mother bought the Honda. And I said it was a non-American car, and I had hinted that her primary choices had been GM, Ford, or Chrysler, or American Motors. And by the way, she actually owned two AMC cars. She owned a Gremlin, she owned a Pacer. And then she bought the Escort. But my point is that the emailer said, Steve, you have insulted Tesla and all Tesla owners by saying that they were not an American car company when you listed off the American car companies in your story. And I was listing off the American car companies in 1988. Now, here's the problem. <laughs> I think she was also suggesting my mother should have considered buying a Tesla when her Ford conked out on her. But, but, there was a whole wall of text 
including several links to stories about where Tesla is based and how they're in California and they're an American car company. In fact, the first sentence of the Wikipedia entry mentions that they're based in America. It's an American corporation, Tesla. And she said, this insult of yours is so grievous and egregious, and I'm paraphrasing here because she didn't use words this clear, but she was making it sound like what I had done was so heinous that I needed to do three things. One, I need to remove the video. The video, which is the story about my mother's car, I need to remove that, take it down, and throw it away. It's, it's that bad. It needs to be removed from the internet forthwith. Number two, I need to do an apology video where I apologize to the company Tesla for offending them so. I need to apologize to all people who've bought Teslas because you have bought American cars and I slandered them by suggesting that they were not around in 1988. And then I also just need to apologize to the public in general for getting my facts so horribly wrong because there might be somebody out there who is thinking about buying a Tesla, but then when they heard me listing all the car companies in America in 1988 and I left Tesla off the list, those people might now think that Tesla is not an American car company even though they're based in California. And so she said, I need to do the apology video. And here's the thing. The video about my mother's car was only put up on the vault as a vault exclusive. She said, you need to take it and also post it on your main channel so everyone can see it. So not only should you apologize in the venue where you were so horribly mistaken, but you need to go out and publicly flog yourself because you got your facts so crazily wrong. And yes, that's the word, crazily. (laughs) Now, here's the thing. The story I was telling took place in 1988. 1988. I double-checked because I was curious because a lot of companies do get formed and they exist for a while before they do anything that makes publicity, right? Makes news. Tesla was founded in 2003. And I assure you that if there's any Tesla people in the audience, and if that fact is wrong, someone will correct me. But they were certainly founded in the 2000s. As noted previously, the story I was talking about took place in 1988. The first vehicle that Tesla unveiled to the public was their Roadster, which, according to my sources, was unveiled in July of 2006, a few years after they were founded. So in other words, they were founded, then they unveiled a prototype. Not the other way around. There wasn't a prototype and then a company formed as a result of it. Company formed, then the prototype, which kind of makes sense to me, but I'm not a car builder, so I don't know. They began production of cars to sell to the public in 2008. Now, I would like to point out to you, if you don't understand how numbers work, that 2008 is a larger number than 1988. And numbers do increase as you look at dates. Okay, I'm talking about the year. So a smaller year is earlier than a larger year. Okay, 2010 comes after 2009 and so on. Okay, so if they began production in 2008, Eight. They were not an American car company in 1988. And if you say, Steve, don't go off the date of production. Go off the date they were founded. Let's, let's be real optimistic here. 2003. Is that 15 years? 15 years. So they became a car company 15 years after my story. But I still should have included them. So what I should have said is, when I was growing up, We always bought American cars. GM, Ford, Chrysler, those are the big three. Of course, you had your American Motors and your Tesla. And uh, if you didn't buy one of those American cars, American cars, GM, Ford, Chrysler, American Motors, Tesla, if you didn't buy one of those cars, they'd make fun of you. You wouldn't buy a foreign car. You'd buy GM, Ford, Chrysler, American Motors, or Tesla, right? Obviously. I think if I'd said that, people would have said, Steve, you couldn't buy a Tesla in 1988. 
Oh? <laughs> and the weird part was, like I said, I got the email and I thought I was being punked. So I sent a note back and said, um, when I was talking about my childhood, I don't know how old you think I am, but, but <laughs> I was an adult in 2003. Let's just put it that way. I was an adult in 2003. And so uh, Tesla was not around as a child. The, the car company wasn't. <laughs> Tesla, the guy, would, had also died. I, I'm not a contemporary of his. I'm not that old either. But I was clearly referencing the era of when I was in elementary and junior high, which is what we called it back then, not middle school, uh, and then high school. And how we drove American cars, and our choices at that time were GM, Ford, Chrysler, or American Motors. And I, I, I wrote back and I said, you understand, I was talking about the 60s and 70s. I said, if I wasn't talking about the 60s and 70s, I mean, I missed Tucker. Tucker, right? I always looked the wrong way. Tucker was an American car company, not based in southeastern Michigan, by the way. Tucker himself was. But his company was in Chicago. The cars were assembled in Chicago. So if I had said all American car companies have been based in southeastern Michigan, I would have been wrong because Tucker. Now, I wrote a book about Tucker. You think I would know that, <laughs> which is why I didn't say every car company in America that has ever existed was based in southeastern Michigan. Because what about Duesenberg? Okay, there have been other car companies, and I know that. So the point is, I was talking about my childhood and the era preceding when my mother switched and bought a Honda. And I, I sent that back, and instead of getting an, oh, now I get it, I got a, uh, no, no. Uh, if you watch your video and see what I'm talking about, you'll realize that you have slandered Tesla by leaving them, and it just regurgitated the wall of text from the first one, the first email, and, and said that I, I was part of the problem in America. And, and she said that people who buy Teslas are constantly being attacked, constantly being attacked. And so they're forced to defend themselves. And it's constant attacks like mine that they have to defend themselves against, which is ironic because I hadn't mentioned Tesla. I hadn't mentioned them at all. I, <laughs> in fact, I, I was toying with the idea about doing this video and not mentioning them by name. So I can say I still haven't mentioned them, but I thought that'd be too hard to tap the answer on. It wouldn't be funny after a while. But I, I simply said, well, I'm, 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 I'm sorry that we have this massive misunderstanding. But number one, I will not be removing the video. I had a lot of people tell me they enjoyed the video. I had a lot of nice comments. I got some very nice emails from people. Uh, I also will not be doing an apology video because I did nothing wrong. So I'm doubling down, as they say. And number three, I'm not posting anything on both channels. YouTube doesn't like that. Uh, YouTube would suggest that you put it on one channel and leave it there or put it on another channel and leave it there. Otherwise, people would open up 100 channels and post everything on 100 channels. And then YouTube would go, what's going on here? Why? Wh huh? <laughs> but it's, it's funny that somebody would say, you've so horribly insulted Tesla owners by not mentioning Tesla in a video about car companies that existed in 1988. And I suspect that every single person in my audience, except for one, completely understands what I'm saying. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Steve, if she's watching your video right now, she certainly understands this because the way you've explained it is so clear and it's so obvious that what you said was correct and she misapprehended it or misperceived it or misunderstood it. It's possible, but I highly doubt it because I think somebody who sends you a wall of text and then when you respond by pointing out that they just simply missed something and they respond by going, no, and it's like <laughs> some people will never understand anything. The real question is, does she really own a Tesla or does she just know somebody who does? I don't know. I don't know. So there you go. That's the fallout from the video about my mother buying a Honda. 
I never would have thought that would start an argument with somebody who was trying to defend a Tesla when I hadn't mentioned Tesla. But there you go, and here we are. <laughs> so it's another Vault exclusive. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.